Dune is a fantastic work of science fiction, and recently, it has been getting all the hype it deserves. With the movies starring Hollywood stars like Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet, the franchise is making a lot of noise. However, fans of Dune know that the story in itself is convoluted and filled with tragedy. In fact, this video is about arguably the most tragic character in Frank Herbert's Dune, Aaliyah Atreides, Paul's younger sister, otherwise known as Saint Aaliyah of the Knife. Aaliyah was doomed from the very beginning, and this is the story of her tragic life and melancholic death. Keep watching to learn more. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, let's begin. How Aaliyah Atreides went on to become a crucial character created by Frank Herbert. Before we jump into who Aaliyah was and what the trajectory of her life was, we must first explore how did the character really come to be. It's tough for most of us to imagine the Dune universe without Aaliyah, the womb of heaven. All the focus fell on Aaliyah after Paul disappeared into the desert and she became the Imperial Regent rising to the occasion and to the spotlight. It might shock you to know that this iconic character was never meant for the throne by Frank Herbert. Aaliyah was originally intended to be killed off in Herbert's first draft of the novel. Her character appeared in the series' first book, Dune, published in 1965. However, Herbert decided to keep her alive in the final draft thanks to the suggestion of John Campbell, the editor of Analog Magazine. Aaliyah would then go on to play a major role in the novels Dune Messiah, which was released in 1969, and Children of Dune, released in 1976. Hence, Aaliyah's fame and popularity was completely unintended as far as Frank Herbert was concerned. Exploring the backstory of Aaliyah Atreides, how someone susceptible to abomination established her rule. Coming to the story of Aaliyah's life, sit down because things are about to take a dark turn. Aaliyah was the most tragic character in a series of books that is full of tragic characters. She was ultimately strong, but also powerless at the same time, and nothing was her fault, but she paid the greatest cost for other people's choices. You can't help but feel bad for Aaliyah of the Knife. Here is her story. The circumstances of Aaliyah's birth played a huge role in shaping the course of her life, so let's start from there. Aaliyah was the daughter of Duke Leto Atreides and his concubine, Lady Jessica, who was a Bene Gesserit witch. However, when Lady Jessica was pregnant with her, all hell broke loose on Arrakis as a concentrated assassination attempt successfully slayed Duke Leto forcing Lady Jessica and her son, Paul Atreides, to flee to the desert for safety. Many parties colluded to make this happen, but the most important conspirators were the Baron Harkonnen and the Emperor Shaddam IV. In the wake of this betrayal, Paul and Lady Jessica were forced to find shelter with the Fremen in the desert in hopes of survival, and one day, retaking their rightful throne. In the desert, they ran into Stilgar and his Fremen tribe, who took the two of them in due to the prophecies of the Fremen, which all pointed towards Paul being their savior. Jessica also showcased her powers as a Bene Gesserit witch and gained the respect of Stilgar and his tribe, and this led to Stilgar also realizing that he must help Lady Jessica find a position in the Fremen society. He also pointed out that the Reverend Mother of their tribe, a spiritual leader of sorts, was getting old and would soon need to be replaced. Stilgar also recognized Jessica as a potential future Reverend Mother, and made reference to the fabled prophecy that the son of a Bene Gesserit bore the key to their future. These circumstances led to Lady Jessica preparing and then undergoing a ritual known as the Spice Agony. However, this fateful ritual in many ways killed Aaliyah before she was even born. The ritual was one of extreme agony and would only be undertaken by women who were Bene Gesserits or Sayadinas after undergoing extreme physical, psychological, and emotional training. They would be made to drink the water of life, which was the final exhalation of a sandworm as it breathed its last from drowning. This water of life acted as a poison, essentially making one overdose on melange, and the woman undergoing the ritual would have to alter her body and its chemicals to be able to make it out alive. However, the ritual wasn't just physical. The water of life also opened up one's consciousness to that of their ancestors, linking them and granting the woman access to the memories and wisdom of all those that came before her. This permanently altered the person, turning them into an all-knowing spiritual leader. 
Before undergoing this draining ritual, Lady Jessica realized she was pregnant, but she chose to carry on with the ritual anyway since she wanted political and social power. Thus, she gave up her daughter's safety to become the Reverend Mother. This was because the water of life impacted the baby in the womb as well, exposing the baby to the dangers of the spice. Thus, as Lady Jessica became the Reverend Mother, so did Aaliyah. She became preborn, which meant that she was awakened in the womb by the memories of her ancestors and a sudden accumulation of knowledge and power, much before being born herself. Unfortunately, while Lady Jessica had the training and discipline to be able to handle this, Aaliyah did not, and thus she was doomed from birth to become the Abomination, a person who could not control their ancestral ego memories after Spice Agony. Having been bombarded with the memories and personalities of her ancestors from the other memory, before even being born, her own personality was shaped by them. In essence, Aaliyah never had the opportunity to be her own person, even though she had become a grown woman in a child's body. Aaliyah was born under these extreme circumstances and one simply cannot help but feel empathy for her. Usually, the Bene Gesserit would kill any child they thought would grow up to be an abomination but since Lady Jessica and Paul were tucked away in the desert, Aaliyah was allowed to live under the watchful eye of the superstitious Fremen women. Growing up, she preferred to be alone, and quickly started showing her mastery of Bene Gesserit spells and magic and water discipline of the Fremen. Her lonely personality and skills in Bene Gesserit exercises prompted the Fremen to want to conduct the test of possession on her. However, thanks to the stature her brother enjoyed in the Fremen society, she was left alone. She spent several years with the Fremen and was there in the palace in Arakeen when her brother and his army defeated the combined armies of House Harkonnen and the Emperor's Sardukar. She used a Gom Jabbar, a poison needle during the invasion, to poison and kill Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, her maternal grandfather, at the tender age of four years. Aaliyah was also able to support Emperor Paul when he established his power in Arakeen and throughout the known universe, since she was born a full reverend mother. While he was visiting Caladan off-planet, she assisted him in ruling his subjects on Dune by mediating disputes between the Fremen and other locals, and she also led crowds of Fremen pilgrims as she prophesied for them. She was a huge asset to her brother and his rule, and even once demonstrated it by foiling an assassination attempt on him. During Paul's rule, Aaliyah was chosen as Marie Fenring's companion while the former Count Hasimir Fenring and his wife, Margot Fenring, transported their daughter Marie to Arrakis to be nurtured by Paul in the royal court. Aaliyah carefully examined Marie and evaluated the advantages and disadvantages of her fighting style. The Fenrings reconnected with their daughter later, and at a banquet to celebrate, the couple unveiled their true intentions, an assassination scheme. However, before Marie could even come close to killing Paul, Aaliyah was able to murder Marie Fenring by severing a deep artery in her body. Because of this deed, Aaliyah gained the moniker Aaliyah of the Knife, the divine huntress who sought out the faithless and who could never be deceived, and was hailed as a heroine. She was already an enigmatic figure during Paul's reign, so when he disappeared into the desert, people looked at Aaliyah to be the logical successor since his children, Ganema and Leto, were simply too young to rule. Thus, Aaliyah transitioned from being a princess to being the imperial regent of the Atreides Empire, because Paul appeared to have died. She quickly developed a cult of personality after becoming corrupted by power and used opulent trappings and pompous titles like the Maudinate to gain major influence in politics. She was at the peak of her power, but little did she realize her spiral into darkness was yet to come. She appeared in a key role in Dune, 1984. Aaliyah's character was seen in the Dune movie released in 1984. Actress Alicia Witt played the role of Aaliyah, and this role catapulted her into fame as a child actor. Her role in this movie traced the birth of Aaliyah as a pre-born child and a full-grown reverend mother in a child's body. This movie gave more screen time to Aaliyah and showcased her beginnings and struggles as she grew up fully aware, having immense knowledge and access to the other memory. The movie also showed us the iconic scene where Aaliyah killed her grandfather, the Baron Harkonnen. The scene unfolded as the Emperor gathered a massive invasion fleet in an effort to exterminate the Fremen and retake control of the planet. In order to understand why spice mining had ceased, he called Baron Harkonnen and even had Raban beheaded. However, at the capital city of Arakeen, Paul launched his tremendous final assault against the Harkonnens and the Emperor's Sardukar. Paul's Fremen soldiers easily destroyed the Emperor's legions by riding on sandworms and using sonic weaponry. During this invasion, Aaliyah successfully kills Baron Harkonnen 
opponent, the mastermind behind all of this, by using a poison needle, Agam Jabbar. Paul then challenged the Emperor and engaged Fade Ratha in a fatal duel. Upon winning, he was declared to be the Kwisatz Haderach by Aaliyah, his sister, and the brother-sister duo sat down to rule their newly acquired empire. As a child actress, she did a wonderful job of portraying the depth of Aaliyah's character and her unique nature. Aaliyah Atreides in other major adaptations. Aaliyah Atreides was played by Laura Burton in Frank Herbert's Dune and Daniela Amavia in The Children of Dune. Laura Burton, a child star at the time, did a brilliant job in pulling off the complicated and mature role at a super young age. Daniela Amavia, on the other hand, was positively ethereal and beautiful as a grown-up Aaliyah. The story told in these two installments of the Dune miniseries followed Aaliyah, her time as regent, her subsequent authoritarian reign, and her descent into madness, finally leading to her death by suicide. For a detailed breakdown of what happened in the miniseries, check out our Dune miniseries explainer video. What made Aaliyah so unique and powerful? Aaliyah was definitely one of the most unique and powerful characters in Frank Herbert's Dune. Her unique birth destined her for both greatness and madness. She had prescient powers and often used them in a unique way. She would project thoughts and images into the mind of people to influence them, such as the horrified Imperial truthsayer Gaius Helen Mohayim. When this happened, the Bene Gesserit Mohayim then told the Emperor that what Aaliyah had done was not telepathy. Aaliyah was truly in her mind like a sort of shared mutual awareness. Mohayim even felt that Aaliyah was like the ones before her, the ones who gave her their memories, equating her presence to that of their ancestors. This showed the insane extent of her powers. However, she was not completely prescient since she was not destined to be the prophesied savior of the Fremen. The fact that her abilities were not at the same level as her brother, Paul, was what led her to consume large amounts of spice in an effort to increase her prescient powers. Further, being preborn, she had access to immense knowledge, power, Powers and the memories of her ancestors, which led her to be incredibly powerful from a very young age. She was able to walk and speak from a very tender age when she was only around eight months old. Not only that, she was well versed in the water rituals of the Fremen and could carry them out with ease. She also picked up Bene Gesserit practices and perfected them even before she made it out of the desert. In fact, Aaliyah was not even a teenager when she killed the Baron Harkonnen and even stopped an assassination attempt on Paul. She also came to be known as Saint Aaliyah of the knife, and it was believed that no one could deceive her. Her abilities held her in good stead for a while. However, things slowly started to go downhill as the spice took control of her and her mind, allowing ancestors and memories of the past to plague her consciousness. How did the legacy of Aaliyah Atreides come to an end? After she became the Imperial Regent, her mother, Lady Jessica, left her and went away to refocus on her Bene Gesserit studies. This left her in full control of the Empire as well as making her the caretaker of Paul's two children, Ganema and Leto. Since Cheney, their mother, had died shortly after giving birth to them, she allowed Paul's wife, Princess Irulan, to live and raise her children. However, Aaliyah always kept a close eye on them. Shortly after, Lady Jessica went undercover to Arrakis to see how her twin grandchildren were doing and to monitor her daughter's growing anxiety about real and imagined adversaries. She became more and more brutal with her actions in an attempt to calm the voices in her head. This was seen when Bronso Vernius of Ix spoke of Paul's shortcomings as Emperor, and Aaliyah reacted angrily, putting him to death. Bronso was Paul's childhood buddy, and Paul would definitely not have wanted this, and thus this marked her first true deviation of behavior, signaling that the abomination was nigh. Additionally, it was at this time that she and the Gola of Duncan, Idaho got married. However, this was not as much a love marriage as it was for stability and political clout. She also became increasingly isolated from whatever family she had left. Soon after this, Aaliyah fully entered the Abomination. This was also because Aaliyah consumed copious amounts of melange over the same years that she kept her distance from her family and friends, presumably to increase the scope of her prescient vision. Aaliyah, however, lacked her brother's gift for foresight, and the spice trance frequently failed her. She thus became hooked in a way, since the spice had initially heightened her sensitivity to her ancestors' voices, and she continued to use it to prevent those voices from becoming distorted or inaccessible. Aaliyah thus used melange 
Assange heavily as a way to stay in touch with and empower her internal advisors. However, she soon began being tormented in secret by the live spirits of countless ancestors. The most notable of these was Vladimir Harkonnen's character, who attempted to exploit his granddaughter as a means to retake power from the hereafter. As the voices grew louder and louder, she realized she would have to do something about it. She made a partnership with the personality that belonged to the Baron Harkonnen, and the two of them managed to keep all the other voices at bay. And while that worked for a little while, it was by no means a permanent solution. Aaliyah had access to the memories and personalities of her predecessors as a result of being preborn, but she found it difficult to control them. She was internally fighting these powerful voices, and the results were paranoia and destructive actions. The evil Baron Harkonnen persona began to have an impact on Aaliyah, and threatened to entirely take over her awareness. She changed considerably after her partnership with the Baron's consciousness. The fact that Paul noticed she had started to gain weight almost right away after she made her partnership with the memory of the Baron and that she herself had recognized she was gaining weight was an intriguing detail. It might likely suggest that the Baron's weight was due to psychological factors rather than just physical ones. It was during this time that Princess Irulan sensed Aaliyah had grown dangerous and was encouraged by Jessica to whisk young Leto and Ganema away to safety. Aaliyah acted like a ruler who was power hungry throughout her regency, aided by the memory of previous generations of ambitious kings and princelings. Every action she took, notably her marriage to the first Duncan Idaho Gola, was perceived as having been taken to further her own position. She was also criticized for deceitfully manipulating Paul's children, who were under her control. She set out to influence her niece and nephew in similarly harmful ways after destroying herself. Since the children's immersion in their ancestors' memories was the most direct path to achieving this objective, Aaliyah made a concerted effort to pique their interest in the spice trance. Aaliyah's delicate mind was warped by the Baron, who caused her to destroy the people she cared about most. This was seen in Children of Dune, where Aaliyah established her own authority as regent, including plots to kill her brother, her mother, and her infant niece and nephew. But the power she acquired offered her no solace. Instead, it drained her humanity to the point where, in the final conflict with her nephew, Leto II, she committed suicide in order to end the Baron's manipulation. Aaliyah hurled herself from a high window to her death, after realizing she would lose the possession trial that her family wanted her to undergo. Her mother Jessica, the Atreides siblings, and Farad and Corino all saw her die. Aaliyah might have rejuvenated her cellular structure and reigned for several centuries if it weren't for her demise. However, as with all abominations, death was the only solution in Fremen tradition. Further, once she died, the water from her body was not even preserved. It was thrown onto the sand and left to evaporate since it was the only way to deal with abominations. This also showed how much her position and the respect people previously had for her had degraded. Although Aaliyah's religious support system had a lasting effect, for many hundreds of years following her passing, she was revered by many. Agents of Duncan Idaho found a cult of Aaliyah on Gady Prime months before Leto II passed away. However, three and a half thousand years after Aaliyah's own death, Leto's death marked the end of Aaliyah's influence. How can Aaliyah Atreides be brought back in Dune Part 2? Denis Villeneuve's Dune, which starred Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet, did not have Aaliyah in the movie. This is because the film focused on Paul Atreides and his journey from being the son of Duke Leto to the savior of the Fremen. Aaliyah was born towards the end of this story, and we only saw a vision where Lady Jessica was seen holding a baby Aaliyah. However, in the second part, we are likely to see more of Aaliyah since, once she becomes a little older, she begins aiding her brother in his quest to regain power. In fact, as you already know, she kills Baron Harkonnen, and then, around the age of 16, becomes the Imperial Regent of Paul's Empire. However, Aaliyah's character is incredibly complicated. Considering the fact that she is pre-born, as per the novels, Aaliyah is a grown person with memories and personalities of her ancestors in a child's body. Hence, whoever is cast in this role has to be convincingly able to play a mature role, despite being just a child. Considering the fact that Villeneuve is someone who strives for realistic portrayals and adaptations, it is unlikely that CGI will be used too much. This means that he will have to cast a young child in Aaliyah's role. This makes things 
things tough in general since the character will have to embody a grown adult, imbibe the mannerisms of an all-knowing and powerful entity, and speak in a manner convincing to the audience. However, the role of Aaliyah has been played previously by actress Alicia Witt in the 1984 movie and by actress Laura Burton in the 2000 miniseries Frank Herbert's Dune, while Daniela Amavia played an older version of Aaliyah in its 2003 sequel, Frank Herbert's Children of Dune. So this definitely can be done, but it will be interesting to see how Denis Villeneuve approaches it. The second Dune movie is slated to release in November of this year. However, so far, there has been no mention of who has been cast in Aaliyah's role. It remains a mystery, so it seems like we have to just wait and watch. Some potential actors who can play Aaliyah Atreides in the upcoming Dune movies. Since there have been no announcements on who is playing Aaliyah in the upcoming Dune movies, we can speculate. Now, an important thing to consider here is the age of the actress. Considering the fact that Aaliyah is super young when she entered the story and killed Baron Harkonnen prior to Paul becoming the ruler of the Empire, a smart thing to do would be to cast a young actress, preferably around the ages of 8 to 12, who can be made to look younger, but can also be taught the importance and song nature of Aaliyah's role and her life. Further, considering Villeneuve wants to make it a trilogy, we can assume that the third part will feature a grown-up Aaliyah. There is further speculation that after the release of Dune Part 2, the third installment will likely not be released until 2028. This would fit perfectly since it would give time for the chosen young actress to really grow into the role and come back as a teenage Aaliyah, ready to take control of the Empire. Some speculations of who would be perfect for the role include child actors Violet McGraw and Thea Eddy. Violet started acting at the age of five. Her first officially recognized role was as Nina in a recurring episode of the television show Love in 2016, and her first feature film was 2018's Ready Player One. Most notably, for her part in The Haunting of Hill House, she was nominated for a 2019 OFTA Television Award for Best Ensemble in a Motion Picture or Limited Series. She is 12 years old, and with proper lighting and makeup techniques, can be made to look younger to fit the age Aaliyah was during the events of Paul's Invasion. Thea Eddy, an American actress, is regarded as one of the most well-liked new child actresses in the movie business. Thea has made several television appearances, including FBI Most Wanted in 2020 and films Village of the Damned and Monsters Inside Me in 2017, and Hello Tomorrow in 2022. She is currently 8 years old and might be able to carry out the role of a young Aaliyah. It will definitely be tough to stay completely true to the novel due to the nature of the character, but Villeneuve loves authenticity, so it will be interesting to see who is cast for this. In case Villeneuve wants to directly cast an adult for the grown-up role of Aaliyah, fans have speculated that Anya Taylor-Joy and Natalia Dyer would be two actresses perfect for the role. Many say that Anya Taylor-Joy has an otherworldly look and presence that suits the character of Aaliyah perfectly, while others say that Natalia Dyer would be the perfect fit since she and Timothy Chalamet look quite alike, making them the perfect brother-sister duo on screen. What happens in the end remains to be seen. In conclusion, this is the story of a tragic character, someone who was failed by everyone around her and, most importantly, neglected by her mother. The fact that Aaliyah's tragic fate was predetermined, like many people in the House of Atreides, was simply one of the many factors that made her so miserable. By the time we reached the later books of Frank Herbert's Dune, Aaliyah had vanished into history, whereas Leto II became God Emperor and Paul was the revered Muad'Dib, names that would endure forever. Her sacrifice was viewed as her final opportunity at salvation, rather than as the same heroic act as those of her brother and nephew. What do you think about Aaliyah, and who would you like to see cast in this tragic role? Let us know in the comments section down below. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.